This is Luke of Parrot, and you are listening to the Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks podcast. In brightest day. In blackest night. No evil shall escape my sight. But those who worship evil's might. Beware my power. Green lanterns and light. Hello and welcome back to another week of Scepter 2814, the Green Lantern podcast. But stop! If you have not listened to Comic Capers episode 110, do not listen to this episode. Do not listen to that. Scroll down a day, right below this one. Ah, for part two. This is part two of Girl of Warfare. I am Phil. Joining me as always, Master of the War. It is. Hey, I'm Will. And making his triumphant return he's off maternity leave. It is. Uh-huh. This is not maternity leave. That's what I call it. <laughs> and of course, it's a new crossover. We're doing some flash. We have our special guest, Miss Little Hellfire. Hey, you boys! I heard you like the party. Hey, you boys! You like the party? You like the party? Man, she yeah. really she likes giving you the business, huh? Well, yeah. <laughs> a couple of bulls. That wasn't oh. that wasn't a star blast drop. That was like. Um, no, that was four, that was Quasar forty six. Remember? Uh, yeah. Yep, yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah. Get bodies. Hey, boy. <laughs> all right, so uh, all right, we can dive into these issues uh, again. Listen to Tommy Capers episode one ten for part one. Part two is going to be Green Lantern thirty one and Flash seventy. So, of course, late October 92 on the Green Lantern and November for the Flash. Okay, Phil, are you ready for a drop? This this goes with our Star Blast. If you're ready, here we go. I am broad. (laughs) I am broad. (laughs) Nice. I am God. There you go. (laughs) Uh, For the glory of Brad. (laughs) <laughs> get around all right so yes part three and four part three is green like i said green lantern 31 late october 92 our our usual creative team gerard jones md bright uh titled gone ape <laughs> Better than gone fishing, but that's just me. Either way, it stinks. Uh, So, Green Lantern and the Flash are attacked by the gorillas of Gorilla City under the control of Grodd. They are nearly successful in defeating the apes when suddenly Hector Hammond appears. How do you just suddenly appear with a head that size? Um, <laughs> Why do birds suddenly appear? Why does Hector <laughs> Hammond suddenly appear? <laughs> Why does he look like a sunglasses uh Stan Lee in this depiction? <laughs> but, you know. Oh, my boy's yeah. home. Oh. Okay. Well, you know, I just thought of his <laughs> Funko Pop. Yeah. I just thought of his perfect pen pal, Modoc. Uh, oh, yeah. Don't say that too many times. You'll you'll summon Charlie Esser. <laughs> We're doing me now, <laughs> Russell. It's been a rough few days, but I always get a big smile listening to all you guys. There's also a lady present. Damn it! I know she does. I know she swears like a sailor and drinks like one, but she's a lady. Damn it! A dude is also a gender neutral term that I will accept. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah. So Hector Hammond appears, and both heroes are knocked unconscious. When Grodd is attacked by Rex the Wonder Dog, Hammond drags him away, and they escape. Good boy. <laughs> Good boy, Rex. Good boy. <laughs> oh, there you go, Lil. You could add an Ace. You could add a Rex. You could... <laughs> Crypto. <laughs> See, you slackers only have what one dog apiece. Lil has what do you have now? Four. She even have is one of them called Gnort. Oh, <laughs> not yet, not yet. Okay. Even as he a gave cow- me his bone. Oh. <laughs> Whoa! Nobody saw Rob. <laughs> he gives me his bone. Uh, uh, 
Hal manages to track Hammond's movements and encases everyone in a bubble, which he throws towards the telepath's location. Unfortunately, one of Hammond's mental blasts sends Hal into unconsciousness, and all of the heroes fall to the ground. Meanwhile, Hammond, uh, yeah, Hammond and Grodd journey deeper into the jungle, getting closer to the meteor that they hope will enhance their powers. Hal, Flash, and Rex give chase, but Hal soon realizes that it's going that his companions are mesmerized by some mutated plants. Only how Poison they... Ivy? <laughs> uh... Uh... She's green. I mean, it kind of fits, right? <laughs> no Batman. No Batman here. <laughs> See? No, if they would just added Batman, we could have got Ray to listen to this thing. I love Batman. <laughs> uh... Only Hal is able to withstand them, and he fights Hammond and Grodd's mental powers with his Green Lantern ring. Well, what else would he fight him with? Well, he's got a big stick, you know. Hello. <laughs> I believe it was one way thought of this. Uh, the resulting strain on the meteor causes it to explode, and its radiation has strange effects on all around. Hammond devolves while Grodd evolves to a similar mental state to Hammond's original state. Green Lantern devolves, which he was already halfway there, while the Flash <laughs> evolves mentally. A primal Howl encounters the Flash, who is now weak and at the mercy of a power ring wielding berserker. So, thoughts? <laughs> well, Does, is the, the artwork uh, in this is, um, somebody definitely smoked a doobie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What is that? Like a cheetah has it's almost giraffe Antlers at one point. And, yeah. Does Hal go for the bananas in this issue, or is that the next issue? Whoa! Uh, I think him. The, the, the next issue. I think. Okay. Yeah, he is attacked briefly by uh, sunflowers with faces. <laughs> if you, you tell me that's not nightmare fuel, I'll wait. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I do like you that um. Well, of course, the Green Lantern book, they should, but I think they could do it in the next issue, too, where it's like where Hal's has taking everyone in the bubble. Of course, Wally's legs are dangling out because his boots are yellow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Nice little touch. <laughs> that is a very yeah. nice touch. <laughs> um, I, I said, there was just like one panel, but it, it was just weird seeing Grodd riding around on the back of uh, Hammond's <laughs> chair. I don't know. And, and uh, the Flash resembles uh, the MTV animated character, the head, a bit at the end. I don't know if you remember that. I show. understood that reference. Thank you. It's very nuanced, but pretty good show. Yeah. Of course, more flashbacks. And fronts. <laughs> nice. I approve. Thank you. Thank you. Talk about, uh, talk about nightmare fuel. Just broad face, just... bro. Cover to cover, this is nightmare fuel. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. Zaniness abound. Mm -hmm. And uh, can we just all appreciate the uh, subtlety of a uh, chimp running a uh, bureau in uh, the U.S. government? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They wish they could be that organized in 2021. <laughs> And again, how Jordan falling out of the air, Will? It's a kind of a theme, isn't it? <laughs> a, couple, uh, yeah, a couple of weeks, it seems to be. Yeah. Evil star, you know, takes his lantern and he, you know, instead of sending off a message, you know, be like, hey, someone, it doesn't have to be a good green lantern. Bring me a battery for five minutes. <laughs> yeah. It's, I'm going to go steal a plane. <laughs> oh, pal, Jordan. That's yeah. right. Let's just blame Parallax. We'll just we'll just blame that on. That's what we've been doing, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Justice for Parallax. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and now the conclusion. Oh, <laughs> oh nice. <laughs> Not the power ring. <laughs> just perfect panel to end on. Yeah. Just, we were talking about Hal's hair being weird before, Will. Jeez. Oh, that's, yeah, it's pretty awesome now. He's got, like, the cool hair. 
And again, this art isn't bad, but in the last part, yeah, in the Flash issue, yeah, I mean, he really looks chrome magnet. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All right. So, any final thoughts on this one? Yeah, no. Wacky, wacky. <laughs> yeah, those look so well, but we know. <laughs> I mean, I still think it's it's an improvement over what we've had for the last, you know, six months in in Green Lantern, and I think in nineties Green Lantern lands, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Green Lantern crossovers are always kind of like mind boggling. <laughs> That's like a theme. It is. <laughs> So, but it's, it's not just because of Mark Wade because of the crossover, too, because I'm, like we were talking, like, you know, Gerard Jones, it's just like, you know, he's writing the regular Green Lantern book. He's writing Mosaic. He's writing Guy Gardner. He's writing the quarterly, quarterly book. book. Yeah. He can basically, and I don't think he's writing Justice League Europe since Hal's there. So it's like he can just wander wherever he wants. So, but yeah. yeah. And there was a, well, I guess it was one of the, the first part of the Evil Star where it's just, I mean, I like words. You know, okay, I, I do, but there was a lot of words <laughs> in that one. I'm like, wow, this, yeah, this seems yeah, to be yeah. much more economical and and uh, better paced and just better. I mean, I, I really feel like this is the best title's been in a long time. Well, issue 26 is just basically how taking his victory lap. Oh, I beat Guy Gardner. I'm back on Earth. Oh, <laughs> here's where I, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That's y'all's boy, though. That's y'all's boy. <laughs> I'm just sitting here patiently for Cal Rayner, okay? <laughs> oh, Philip never changed. <laughs> uh, uh, so, all right. So the last part from Flash 70. Uh, another short synopsis, but uh, yes, November 1992. Guerrilla Warfare conclusion. Quite a head on his daughters. <laughs> burn! Sick burn! <laughs> they beat us to the punchline. I mean, it could have been worse. Yeah. Like, hey, see the head on that dude? <laughs> Green Lantern and Flash have been transformed by the third piece of the meteor, which originally involved Gorilla Grunt and Hector Hammond. Those villains, too, have shifted form due to this new piece of meteor. Oh. Um, and don't forget Rex. Give Rex his flowers. <laughs> yeah. I know. Is that the wonder dog? Uh, is that all the synopsis they gave? Okay. <laughs> Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> but no, I mean, I like this because, you know, now Flash, Flash can barely run this old, old again, big head. But yeah. <laughs> Here's your bananas, Will. Yeah. <laughs> I, just, I love that. I'll try to... Bananas, B A. Just trying to figure out. Oh, why don't power ring work? But they're yellow, so he can't have the bananas. Monkey sad. <laughs> oh. You can eat the not so ripe ones. You know, or, or the, you know. And is and is this another yellow lamp moment, Will? When uh, you know Wally needs a second to take a you know use Hal's mind to use the ring, and, you know. Cure them. He, he throws his yellow booth in front of that power ring. <laughs> oh That's wow! Awesome. Yeah. Is that another yellow lamp moment? Uh, it's approaching it, I think. <laughs> Here, I'm going to stop your it's ultimate weapon point. with my green. I mean, my yellow sock. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was a good throw because it went totally over his arm. You know, you got to, that's some skill, right? Boot <laughs> right on that hand. It's like, there you go. <laughs> hey, he's smart now. He can calculate the angles. Hey, wait a second. If he throws the boot on his hand and no sunlight can get in to light up the inside of the yellow boot, is it actually yellow? And then the ring would be able to affect it. <laughs> If, if a tree falls in uh, monkey lands and nobody's around to hear it, uh, does anybody go sense. bananas? <laughs> yeah. does, Re does Rex the Wonder Dog chase after a broken branch? <laughs> but when he tries to light up that power ring, it's going to light up the inside of that boot. And so it's still going to be yellow, though. Isn't there it? you go. There you oh, go. My God. Yeah. Can you imagine if the inside of that boot wasn't yellow, though? Yeah. <laughs> it was black. <laughs> Wash your feet. Oh, that's right. Will said he doesn't wash his feet. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, he, while he uses his mental powers, he 
tap into Hal's ring and cure them both, you know. And as he's coming back to normal, Hal Jordan gets out of Tim Allen. <laughs> he breaks down the fence to Wilson's yard so he can finally <laughs> see him. It's an, invis- it's an invisible wall. Uh, yellow Emerald City looking place. Oh, no. yeah. And that's where the bananas fell, too. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I thought when Green Lantern was, uh, when Hal Jordan was was in his Cro Magnon form, it, it looked like he was drawn by R. Crumb, kinda. You know, <laughs> just, just, just very. Uh, I don't know. I always imagine that's what uh, Hal's inner beauty is like. He's not a good guy. I don't, I don't care what you tell me. He's not a good guy. That's like the shallow Hal moment. You see what he really looks like. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it bulked him up a little bit, but basically just gave him more hair and, like, bad teeth. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so this is what British Hallow Jordan would look like. Oh, Don't at me! <laughs> Don't at me! <laughs> well, come on. He just started uh, leading Justice uh, Justice League Europe. You gotta get into character. It's right? the water that makes the teeth bad. I got you. You gotta import that Dasani, homie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and we didn't get enough of Gorilla City. I'm just saying, like when you say Grod, I expect Grod. You yeah, say Grod. I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I kind of was complaining multiple times in the previous episode. I want more Grod in this. He takes. He it's takes a bait a, and he's switch. Like a, he's a super <laughs> sidekick to uh, Hammonds, which is unacceptable in my view. We don't even like Hammond. Why he doesn't even go here? <laughs> no. Well, I guess they, he, wanted, they wanted a Flash villain and a Green Lantern villain. It's like, oh hey, Meteor, and, you know. Yeah. Hey, but it's called guerrilla warfare. I mean, come on. <laughs> yeah. 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 But they should have been that. called head games. <laughs> no. I don't think the comic code would have approved. <laughs> <laughs> no. I'll, I'll, wait for, I'll wait for the Grodd, the bad, the ugly. Oh, wow. <laughs> they do have a story <laughs> called that, too, by the way. <laughs> really? Uh, here's just a little side I'm note. I'm sure. <laughs> here's just a little weird little side note. When I went to Europe, I uh, was visiting with a friend... And sometimes they, they translate the names differently when they're released overseas. And this is in the, the Netherlands, not just Europe. And uh, they translated the good, the bad, and the ugly to the good, the ugly, and the bad for some reason. That's what it was called. <laughs> it probably sounds better coming off the tongue for them than the, Maybe, the other way still, around. It was still printed in English, but whatever. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Yeah. Sounds, sounds like the evolution of like people, some people's relationships, the good, the ugly, and then the bad. The bad, and the bad. I mean, it usually ends with the bad, I guess. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah. Oh Lord. Right. I don't. Okay, I don't think Grant or Solovar are good leaders for Gorilla City. I say <laughs> Gorilla City needs its own independence. No more dictatorships for Gorilla City. That's- yeah. Great election. <laughs> Russell says we need Grodd, Ultra Humanite, Monsieur Mala, and Titano to team up. <laughs> wow. I Go to bed, it. Russell. You're tired. <laughs> <laughs> and the title of the book could be Eight Stronger Together. <laughs> yeah. Monkey see, monkey do. Could you imagine? <laughs> Don't give Bendis any ideas. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. oh, yeah, he's writing just. Yeah. But yeah, I just love Wally zigzagging around trying to find Gorilla City and then how just like smash it film. <laughs> yeah. Get that That's one way to find it. <laughs> yep. I mean, it was a good battle that they have there. Uh, although I could have done without the bananas being thrown into the barrels of guns to thwart <laughs> them. But, um, <laughs> you know. Actually, you know, that page that you just shown, there were uh, in the previous two chapters, there were a couple of really cool double page spreads too. Yeah. Yeah. What was it? The last one, I think it was the one of Grodd and him and yet. Yeah. I just love how they were just like, oh, we're out of time. Epilogue. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> yeah. And that's, maybe that's why I got the cartoon episode uh, vibe from it earlier. But yeah, it's, it's a good, 
good way of saying it. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, they, yeah, they just get to round up the uh, apes because Rex is just fighting Grodd. Yeah. And only psychos peel their grapes. I'm just saying. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> but if you're doing like a, one of those haunted house things where everyone blindly feels the stuff, you gotta again, peel psychos the peel grapes. <laughs> Check the basement. <laughs> Uh, Might not just be spaghetti for intestines. Just life pro tip. <laughs> we have a drop for everything and it scares me. <laughs> Most of them are you. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, the I... whole bananas with the... Uh, just, I don't know. In the barrel. Yeah. What's what's the appeal? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Four issues and that's the conclusion? <laughs> No, yeah. we also get Flash digging a giant trench, and I didn't even know you could. Do, I didn't know how could lend his constructs like that. I didn't know it worked like that. Yeah, yeah I think you can make him solid enough for someone to use, can he? Uh, I guess as long as he keeps concentrating on them, hell, right? Hell on mosaic! John Stewart's giving kids Green Lantern rings. <laughs> well, well, that's true. That's First of all, that's John Stewart. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's get that straight. <laughs> Well, let's be fair. How Jordan can, uh, you know, gather up enough uh, concentration to make a shovel. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll definitely agree to that. Uh, so yeah, yeah. They, they just drop them in this trench. Yeah, and then put a net um, over them. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I wanted to to mention, it, it got me doing a little research. Is I think at the beginning of every issue, they dedicated it to, to John Broom. John Broom. Yeah. yeah, he's an interesting guy. I didn't realize that he created Hal Jordan and helped co-create Guy Gardner. But more importantly, he, uh, in, was it 1952, he created uh, Detective Chimp in The Adventures of uh, Rex the Wonder Dog Wonder number Dog. four. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Mark, that rascal! Yeah, <laughs> so it, it was kind of a tribute, you know, to bring it back, but... But he wrote. Eef. Did he not? I think he wrote what? All of the seventy first seventy five issues of Green Lantern. You know, until Denny O'Neill and Neil Adams took over. Maybe. Wow. Probably. Yeah. Yeah. I think, I so. think so. I'd have to double check that. But I, yeah. I, I think. I mean, it doesn't say. Well, I was looking just looking at Wikipedia at a glance, but it said that he uh, he kind of. He, he took over in Showcase 22, or he created him in Showcase 22, and then he was the primary scripter in the solo series. So, yeah. But I think he retired from comics in the 70s or something. And then he moved to Japan to teach English. So, good. Sweet gig if you can get it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Especially you get free rent the whole thing. I'm telling yeah. you, it's getting it. And you don't have to even speak Japanese, but I mean, it would help if you live there. But, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, like we said, what you know, like you said, Will uh, Wade is like a master of like comic trivia. I mean, I think the only one who could ever outmatch him was like Grunwald, probably. Yep, I think so. I, which is funny because you know, Gru is over at Marvel. <laughs> Okay, well, if Bob Burton takes over for Jeopardy, we have to have him chat. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Nerd edition. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm Get all the, like, comic book creators and do all comic book trivia. <laughs> That'd be cool. Here's an audio clip. Name this person. Hey, no, see you <laughs> Who is Bob Finger? <laughs> <laughs> I can't, I can't. I don't want to get struck down by the nerds. I can't. <laughs> but yeah, this was an interesting. Like, did it have to be four issues? <laughs> well, again, the first two were kind of running concurrent, so it's like you almost could have did that. Yeah. First, those first two is one. Mm -hmm. I, I like getting the opposite POV. That was a pretty yeah. cool little gimmick. Won't lie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And again, I guess they wanted every you know each book to have the same amount of issues, so two and two. What's well, fair right. is fair. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, they could have done a one-off three-parter, but whatever, you know. <laughs> but yeah, that involves I, I don't uh, think, different. Yeah. 
Did they? Different times, man. The nineties yeah. were different. Yeah. I don't think that they ever collected this as a, you know, like a four issue trade or anything. No, because I, it's not even a DC Universe Infinite. Because again, you know, Gerard Jones. I don't I think it's because because if you go on the flash issues aren't even on DC Universe Infinite these two so oh, huh. he he even tainted those so wow Neil before God okay <laughs> <laughs> keep personal life yourself Russell <laughs> <laughs> no thank you <laughs> oh yeah so could we, could we say yeah uh, they pretty much uh, at the end everyone just kind of monkey pals on God yeah. <laughs> But it was Rex, and wasn't it a dog pile? Oh. <laughs> also, Hal was super rude to that dog. He's like, dogs don't have any more germs than humans. I'd rather, I, look, listen, I'd rather have my dog kiss me than another human being. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Humans are gross. We're gross. <laughs> Come on, Lil. Yeah, you got your dog or those himbos you bring home. Okay. Same difference. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, Russell, Gerard Jones, and Chris Hansen with Dateline NBC. <laughs> well, Chris Hansen's disgraced himself, so, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Oh On my, that note. <laughs> oh, my God, kid, look. Doomsday is coming. <laughs> wow. Wow, that just put everything into perspective. <laughs> hey, but that's okay. I'm sure it won't affect Green Lantern at all. Yeah. <laughs> no spoilers, no spoilers. Let the kids fight over themselves. We'll get there. We'll get there. Uh, and again, like I said, they remembered it again. So on the way home, while well, Al's taking everyone home, Wally takes his boots off. <laughs> yeah, his boots off. Keep those things away from me. <laughs> All right. So, Macona, what did you think? I mean, I, I, I kind of echo the sentiments of, uh, of, of Lilith and, and yeah, why, why, why wasn't it a three issues? But I do, but I did enjoy it. I thought it was fun and uh, very cartoony. I mean, perfect to uh, hopefully brought in some crossovers to both books, you know, because Green Lantern, uh, as, as was mentioned before, is still sort of finding themselves and uh, as a book because they're sort of being spread out over five or six different books it feels like it <laughs> sometimes and uh you know I, I i wish there was more grod and i think that they could have wrapped it up in a less silly way but it was still <laughs> par for the course and uh, an enjoyable read for four issues to flip through so. you know you know matt has a good point well if you were complaining about four i mean they could have dragged this out to six and had two issues of justice league europe in this too <laughs> i would have for it honestly <laughs> Ju justice league europe doesn't get enough like attention so that would have been a thing to do honestly well i was thinking about it today at this point wasn't justice league europe have like a better roster than like the american league because like, it did right now it's like green lantern flash aquaman uh was it metamorpho there at this point i mean rocket's a good you know they actually had female representation oh yeah power <laughs> girl how long did JLE last past Doomsday? Was it a long time, or how close are we to getting to the end of the run of that book? Oh, I don't remember. Uh, Nobody does, Phil. <laughs> oh, how dare you? <laughs> it's, sad. It's, it's very underrated, very underread. <laughs> oh, I know. Uh, well, they, they, you know, there was some weird stuff in here too. But how and power girl stuff boy you throw how jordan at a woman man it's crazy stuff happen. yeah yeah <laughs> uh, everyone's looking what's black <laughs> <laughs> right, that up. you're moving too slow fella <laughs> sorry so anyone else have any thoughts on this as a whole will will it's it's wacky, but like in a good way, but like unexpectedly wacky. Like I said, we were seventy issues into Wally, and we were kind of trying to be a little more serious, and then all of a sudden we kind of like revert back to like those issues that happened between like I say twelve and like thirty two, <laughs> where it was a little wacky because they didn't know what to do. 
Oh yeah, this was definitely a break from that both books. Yeah. William. Yeah, I mean this was this was good fun. I'm looking up Justice League Europe, but uh, <laughs> fifty I mean, issues, seventeen plus if you include Justice League International. Okay. <laughs> but I, you know, I really feel like the quality of, of Green Lantern improved for these two issues. You know, the, of the crossover, <laughs> it was. I, it's just, you know, it took us. Everything has been taking so long with Green Lantern, with Jones as the writer. I mean, I, I'm happy to get some some good old fashioned, you know, movement forward. I guess. Oh yeah, and this was a fun story. I mean, Definitely, hey, monkeys are cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry. Should we get out of here? Let's get out of here. <laughs> so the baby can talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, kids. Come back in one week. Will, you can join us if you want next week. Next week, Guy Gardner, one through four. <laughs> Remind me to send in feedback, Phil. <laughs> okay. And then in two weeks, Green Lantern Mosaic, six through eight. So Awesome. Have fun, boys. <laughs> I thought you liked Thank Mosaic. You. I do. It's a little tough to get through our parts, but it's pretty good. And then in three weeks, Will, Green Lantern 32 to 35, the third law. Yeah. Uh, secrets upon secrets. Yeah. All right. That's anyway. why his hair's so big. Hey, old. <laughs> Finally, a reference to Gantha's tail. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Leprechauns. Uh-huh. Anyway, kid. So yes, email us. Did you like the crossover? Email us about stuff coming up. Email or hey, welcome back, Macona. Send, yes. send your congratulations for the return of Macona. Email us at yeah. lunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38Capes. And remember to follow Sector 2814, the Green Lantern Podcast on Facebook, Twitter. Find links to all of our various shows. Again, I don't know why you're listening to this. If you didn't listen to part one, so go check out Common Capers 110. Uh, yes, find links to the YouTube channel again. Everywhere will help by rolling her eyes. <laughs> Damn monkeys. Uh, <laughs> links to the Patreon. So much good stuff going on there. Links to merch. All in one place. That's link free. L I N K T R dot E E slash Capes Analytics. You forgot the shirt, but that's fine. Oh, yeah, you get shirts at that. Uh, oh, yes. The mer- hey, I'm not wearing the shirt. <laughs> all right, so go p- and kids, remember all things Southgate. Go pick up Pod Life, the book, now in digital paperback. Learn about podcasting from the experts and third best Southgate. <laughs> <laughs> Does that not win Kitty Poo? <laughs> <laughs> at Little Hellfire. Uh, yeah, at Little Hellfire. Uh, yeah, and then go check out southgatepdgroup.com and go check out the Southgate Media Group Patreon. Uh, again, lots of free stuff there from everyone on the network. Uh, some extra paid content also. So go check out all things Southgate Media Group. Make it rain, so says Master Duke. Go back and look at my history. All right, special guest Little Hellfire. Where can people find <laughs> You nerds want to hang out with me on the interwebs, you can find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire, on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire69, and of course on TikTok, not making content, don't get excited, at Lilith Hellfire69. You need the money, gimme, gimme. Oh, we said it last time, so. Nobody tell Brian. All right. All right. Just wait, I give it two weeks. <laughs> That's true. All right. Big Daddy, Matt Kona, where can people find you? Uh, you can find me at Matt Kona. Or I'm not doing anything, but that's where I normally would be. But that's where I am. Follow him on social media for those dog fight videos every morning. Yeah, yeah, I do do those still. Morning rabble rousing at the dog park. Yeah. Uh, Miller. <laughs> All right, Will Allred, Master of the Core. Where can people find you in your printed works? Uh, you can find me at Walred. That's uh, W A L L R E D. That's Gmail, Twitter, Facebook, and all those places. Uh, you can find Crossover Division at crossoverdivision.com. Number two is coming to Kickstarter real soon, I hope. Ooh. And you can find uh, Diary of Night 
at diaryofnight.com. And if you love Quasar, you probably, I mean, if you love Green Lantern, you probably love Quasar. So go find out all kinds of cool stuff at the Quantum Zone, quantumzone.org. They aren't even attempting to our offices. Uh, hope it's going somewhere nice. <laughs> Uh, well, it is hell, so maybe uh, maybe that's, that statement's not so true. <laughs> I'll put it in my navel. <laughs> and again, if you love Quasar, stay tuned. Probably in July, we're going to be getting our Quantum Zone annual. We'll talk about those current Guardians of the Galaxy issues. And what is that damn Marvel Legends figure coming out? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining us again. Oh, sorry, you're always welcome, especially next week, Guy Gardner. <laughs> I didn't just want to talk Guy Gardner. <laughs> oh my God, we just have to pick at least a page or two and have that show to his eye. I missed his uh, Guy Gardner library. <laughs> <laughs> But I don't know about you guys, but I love this crossover. <laughs> Thank you very much. It was good. And until next time, don't be monkeying around. <laughs> don't tell me what to do.